Hurricane Milton remained offshore on Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula early Tuesday. The National Hurricane Center said at 11 a.m. Tuesday that Hurricane Milton was about 520 miles southwest of Tampa. It had maximum sustained winds of 150 miles per hour and was moving in an east-northeast direction at 9 miles per hour, the Hurricane Center said. Power lines, light poles and trees were knocked down near the coast, and some small thatched roof structures were destroyed, according to Yucatan Governor Joaquin Diaz Mina but he did not report any deaths or injuries. The hurricane was a Category 4 storm at late morning Tuesday, the center said. The center said a storm surge warning has been extended southward along the east coast of Florida to Port Canaveral. The entire Gulf Coast of Florida is especially vulnerable to storm surge. Forecasters warned of a possible 8 to 12-foot storm surge in Tampa Bay. That's the highest ever predicted for the location and nearly double the levels reached two weeks ago during Helene. The storm could also bring widespread flooding. 5 to 10 inches of rain was forecast for mainland Florida and the Keys, with as much as 15 inches expected in some places. Afortunadamente solo nos han reportado inundaciones en el puerto de Celestún, algunos postes caídos, la Comisión Federal de Electricidad ha estado trabajando esta madrugada, en Cisal, puerto de Jurumaya se restableció la energía, tuvimos la caída del techo de un campo de softball, pero en general daños menores. Explosively intensifying Hurricane Milton is the latest freaky system to come out of what veteran hurricane scientists call the weirdest storm season of their lives. Before this Atlantic hurricane season started, forecasters said everything lined up to be a monster busy year, and it began that way when Beryl was the earliest storm to reach Category 5 on record. Then, nothing. From August 20th, the traditional start of peak hurricane season. To September 23rd it was record quiet, said Colorado State University hurricane researcher Phil Klotzbach. Then five hurricanes popped up between September 26th and October 6th, more than double the old record of two. On Sunday and Monday, there were three hurricanes in October at the same time, something that never happened before, Klotzbach said. In just 46.5 hours, Hurricane Milton went from just forming as a tropical storm with 40 miles per hour winds to a top of the charts category 5 hurricane with 160 miles per hour winds and then it got even stronger. Before hurricane season started June 1st, forecasters such as Klotzbach and the federal government looked at the record hot oceans and an embryonic La Nina cooling of parts of the Pacific that brings winds and other conditions that foster hurricane formations. They made bold predictions of an extremely busy season. It was nearly unanimous. When Beryl became a Category 5 hurricane in early July, they were looking prescient. Then came mid-August. August 20th is such a milestone marking the beginning of peak hurricane season, which runs to mid-October, that hurricane season forecasting pioneer Bill Gray used to ring a bell as sort of a starter's pistol. This year when a student rang the bell, the storm activity seemed to ground nearly to a halt. When computing a combination of storm strength and duration, the next month was the lowest on record, Klotzbach said. That was strange because the Gulf of Mexico, Caribbean and parts of the Atlantic were at record or near record high temperatures, acting as giant gas stations for hurricanes. But the air was also warming to an unusual degree and more than sea surface temperature. Add to that a natural weather phenomenon pushed air from high up to sink down low over the Atlantic, which made it tougher for hurricanes to form, said University of Albany atmospheric scientist Kristen Corbusiero. The upper air got cooler, the sinking air moved away, and in the Gulf of Mexico the Central American gyre, 
a whirling overarching weather system, took over. That started the spin that kept kicking out hurricanes, Corbusiero said. Hurricane Helene formed, followed by Isaac, Kirk, Leslie and now a monstrous Milton. Helene rapidly intensified in those warm waters, but when Milton came along it gained strength at a much higher clip, quadrupling in wind speed in less than two days. Milton became the seventh storm in the last 20 years to gain at least 75 miles per hour in wind speed in just 24 hours and none did so between 1950 and 2000, Klotzbach said. Corbusiero, Klotzbach and other experts said random chance, other weather conditions, perhaps the 2022 undersea volcano eruption that shot lots of water vapor into the atmosphere all could have also played a role in the weird hurricane season. It's been a, uh, a very, very weird year. Um, just you get quiet periods and busy seasons and busy periods and quiet seasons, but to have such a prolonged lull and then to come right back and just go really get really busy is, I just, we just haven't seen that. And, you know, I was looking back through some trying to, going back as far back as Atlantic records go, and there's not really any good analogs for this season, just how neurotic it's been. We had the first first three hurricanes simultaneously in October we've ever observed on record, like just all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, and it just that came upon just a complete dead peak of the season where we had the least ace from August 20th to September 23rd since 94. So it went from like one of the quietest seasons or very busy start to extremely quiet to, you know, we're going to end up, you know, assuming Milton doesn't completely flame out, which seems highly unlikely, at least an above average season. <laughs> For uh, uh, Milton, uh, if we go back to 12Z yesterday to today, it's intensified by 65 knots, uh, which is on the, that's 75 miles an hour in 24 hours. So that is probably about what it'll end up being when the Hurricane Center does their, their report at the end of the season. That's a lot. I mean, we've had those kind of storms, but that's not, a, that's on a very, very high end for a 24 hour intensification rate. We have more extreme events in a warming climate. So um, while we can't specifically say at this point what exactly is, is the cause, um, we know more extreme events are happening and life and property um, are, you know, of utmost concern.